So I'm back from work and we have a bag full of rivets. Uh, as far as I can make out, they were dispatched from EKP yesterday and they've arrived today. Uh, let's get in the workshop and fit this lot. So, I must say, so far this week, I have been very impressed with communication and delivery. So, the 17D, I know it was my fault that I left it to the last minute to uh, actually check what was in the box before making the kit. And that was partly because I was doing this, I knew I was going to film this for, for you. So I want, I didn't want to get the files all lost in history and forget what I've done with it or accidentally delete something. So yeah, I fully admit I sh didn't open the box and check what was in there. However, having found the problem, they were very good with two or three emails sent it out the same day and the following day it was in my hand i then realized that i needed to get some rivets and uh ordered the rivets on monday night okay it was late monday night so ekp may have already finished for the day or it came in so late they didn't notice it. But, um, yeah, I got confirmation of the order yesterday. It arrived at some point today. I was at work, so I didn't notice it arrive, obviously. So I've come in from work and I'm straight on it this afternoon. I say straight on it, I've made my daughter's dinner uh, and while she's having dinner. I'm just getting some riveting done. So, you see, it does look pretty smart as it goes together. Let's give you the finished one. So, I'll carry on with this, and I've got the other side frame to do, and then we'll start putting it together. So, I'll get back to you very shortly. So with that all riveted, I believe we're ready to assemble. Now, I'll leave the brake stuff for last. The buffer beams, I think they go on towards the end as well, put them to the side. So, we've got the frames. stretchers, and the uh, side boot, so I'm just thinking this through as I go. So, two of each of these, two of each of these, they'll go in afterwards, let's get the main frames together first. So they will want to go side by side with these on the bottom of them. So if we put them on first, so that could be welded now as could this. Now I'm about to make a deliberate mistake. So these together 
like so. Now, the deliberate mistake is, if I were to put these in, then I cannot get the stretcher frame in between. So they need to be put together, then dropped in. Same as, it's already too late, bar a bit of flexing. In fact, that flexing might be okay to get those frames in. So, yes, it's just getting these ones together. Uh, nothing happens with that one. We just need to worry about this and the one on the bottom. So I'm going to do, do these bits first, make up even if I just tack them, those go nice and tightly, and that. feels like it will be perfect. So let's just, a couple of tacks, holding these together, holding the bottom pieces on, and we'll come back. So, yes, plan of action is, I've waffled quite a lot here, but I'm going to tack them together, clamp it in the vise and clamp it, uh, tack it. Same with the second one of them. And same with them. Hold them down. Just run a weld along each of them. Same with that one. Then we can start putting things together. So, one thing at a time. Let's get that done. So, we're at that next stage, these are welded, still warm, we stand that up, on the way round for that, get these plates in, So, one of my rivets is a little bit proud, and that's what these catch on. So, on the rivets which are in line with those little brackets, make sure they're riveted flush. So, that, if I put these in as well,
That is a pretty rigid structure. It won't twist, so it must be square. So we can go around and tack everything together. My watch is telling me I've got to go for dinner, so I'll be back and do that after then. So here is the rivet that was stopping that one dropping down. And similarly over there. But as you can see, I didn't rivet them flush. Um, I did countersink them, the plate, rivet them down, but I didn't think I was going to have a problem, so I just left them slightly proud. But let's um, take this all together. Well, that didn't take long, just with a little weld on each one to stop them sliding. They won't go anywhere in a hurry. So, what's next? It will be these down the sides. See if I can do this one handed. Not easily. No. Well, they've got to go down the sides. And then we can think about buffer beams as well. So, I've just tried putting this on and it looks like it's got a slight bend, probably from the laser cutting. So, so whatever I do, oh, perhaps if I put it on the right slot, I get, get the first one in the slot, get the second one in the slot. Uh, the third one's in. Oh. This one's, you get the idea, that's on the wrong side of the lug but that's in the slot that's in the slot that's in the slot and this one is starting to come up out away from them so I think there's a bit of a bend here so what I'm going to do is just tack them in place as I go Give these another weld from the other side in a minute. get the idea so I'm going to do this finish this off get the other side in and we'll look at the buffer beams which I'll just show you one <laughs> sits there like that those buffer holes seem to be colliding with that longitudinal frame so I need to see what's going on with that and whether that's how it should be. But we'll get these on first and we'll get back to you. So at the moment I have just put a bit of flex on those ends to hold this in place. So it will just come away when I push pull it. But you can see what I mean about these buffer beam holes. They're bang in line with the frame. 
So, I went and got the buffers to see how they're meant to be attached. Offered them up to the buffer beam and the holes don't line up. So, either I've got the wrong buffer beams or the wrong buffers, but either way, I am going to do something about this and make these buffers fit on this buffer beam. Uh, I haven't decided yet whether I just take one buffer apart. It's only one bolt in the back to get the buffer and the spring off. Um, and use one as a template to drill or spot all four buffers. And then I could even drill and tap the frames to save having nuts on the inside. Uh, so that is what I might do. So I'll come back to that tomorrow. I've had enough for tonight. And since I'm going to come back to it tomorrow, in the morning I will email 17D and just see if they've got a solution for that. It might be that they've changed the design of something and forgotten to change the design of the other one, other bit. So the buffers might have been castings before, for example, and they've updated it to a CNC machined one, but the whole centers are different. I don't know, I, um, but I will point it out to them because it might be something they want to change for future kits to other people. But for now, I'm going in and I will catch up with you in a moment. So that's where I'm gonna leave it for this time. Uh, like I mentioned at the end of the last video, there's just too much um, involved in this to have gone into one video as I'd hoped. Uh, it was going to be too long and too boring. Instead, it's just gonna be short and boring, or well, not quite as long, but still just as boring. So yes, come back next time and we'll find out what happened when I spoke to 17D and we can finish putting the wagon together. So come and have a look and I'll see you next time.